name is Dan Olecki. I work with JC Canestraro. I've been there for about 10 years. I'm a licensed fire protection engineer for the state of Massachusetts. Today we're talking about the rare books improvements at Boston Public Library, fourth and fifth floors. We have the pre-action system, the clean agent system, and the detection controls network to operate those two systems. I've been doing this for just over 10 years now. Um, so hopefully you guys have questions and if you can stump me, you know, proud of you. So um, to get started, we'll, we'll, we have been here on level four. This is the floor control valve assembly for the fourth floor. This does all of the new work that's been done for the rare book storage improvements. Um, we'll get started. This is the butterfly valve that controls the whole area. This is closed. That means that there's no water flowing. Over here, we have the floor control valve assembly, a flow switch or pressure gauge so you can see what the system pressure is at, and this is your test and drain. So whenever the system testing is being done, this is operated, you can see water flowing through the site glass, and that's what all there is to the floor control valve assembly station. What's the pressure supposed to be? The pressure is supposed to be, I want to say around 55, and we're at, we're at 60 right now. So, um, yeah, it should be right around 55, 60. There's no fire pump in this building, so it's uh, the street pressure, the highest it should ever get is, I want to say, 80 PSI in this building. Are those chains chains to lock the valve? Right, so this is a, this is a uh, tamper uh, visible, so you can see whether the valve's open or closed. When it's up like this, that means it's closed. Right now, the system is not live because we're finishing up the fire alarm. Uh, fire alarm attachment to our to our current system. So this is chained, closed, and locked, so that this can't accidentally be opened and discharge any water into the into the space. If somebody walked by and just turned that, then it would turn on. Somebody could walk by and turn this, and it would turn on. Um, and or unless it's locked open, or it should be open. It should always be open. Sorry. Yeah. So, so under normal conditions, this will always be open, this, this should be open, and if it's closed, it's electrically supervised, so it'll send an alarm to the central monitoring location downstairs. So if, it's, if anybody ever plays with it the way it shouldn't be played with, there's an alarm immediately sent downstairs. But does that tell me water would be flooding in the pipes? So these pipes right here will always be filled with water, all the way up to the red cabinet, which is a good lead-up question, because that's where we're going next. So the answer is no. Like if you that just turns the water off, that's coming in to pressurize the uh, pipe. So basically, if it's off, the water can't flow. Right, and I'm saying like if, if someone, that actor wanted to all really, they, all they would do would be able to turn it on all the time. So yep. all they would be able to do is to turn it off. And if they did turn it off, they would turn it off. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, if we're all for no more questions. Yeah. Um, more requesting more water from these trim contacts. So, so the sprinkler or Sorry. Yeah, yeah let sorry. me no let me get to so okay, so training today, we're going over all of the fire suppression systems on the fourth and fifth floor for the rare books improvement. Um, that would be the wet system, which is the lobby area and uh is actually just the lobby area. And then we have the pre-action system, which is the dry pipe. That does all of the rest of the spaces, and that's always dry unless there's a smoke alarm and a sprinkler that breaks. So you have to have two things happen for that to go off. Um, and then we'll also be going over the clean agent system. So that's the Novec 1230, which is a liquid that gets expelled as a gas. Yep. What are the odds that there ever be a leak in the system? Is that monitored, pressure monitored? Yep. What are the odds that there ever be a leak in the system? Very, very, well, especially low here, actually. Right. Yeah. Because um, part of the specification for this project was Schedule 40 galvanized threaded pipe in the whole dry system. So you'll see it in there. It's, it's, it's big, big threaded pipe. So the odds that we're going to get a leak very low. is very low.
right, so this is the this is the total pack three. This is the pre-action cabinet. This is a single interlock pre-action system on this floor and the fifth floor actually. So you'll see that this is the Schedule 40 galvanized threaded pipe that I was talking about. Um, that's the dry pipe. Black pipe is all wet pipe. Can you explain what a pre-action system means? Yep. Yep. A uh, pre-action system means that it is dry until a solenoid operates to let water into the system. So that's usually controlled by either smoke detection or some kind of pneumatic system. So in this in this case here, we have uh, we have the assembly in here. So this is the pre-action valve. So for this building, the pre-action system works by two smoke detectors going off. So the two smoke detectors have to be in the same room, but any two smoke detectors that go off will trip a solenoid which drains water on the top of the valve, allows it to discharge. It'll fill the system with water. Nothing will come out of the system, but it'll be filled with water until it gets hot enough for a sprinkler head to break, and then you'll get water coming out of the sprinkler head. And I'm assuming we get notifications once the pre-action system oh, yes. is um, set off. Yes, yeah, if the pre-action oh, system, hear. right, no, yeah, exactly. So as soon as the smoke detector goes off, that'll send your building into general alarm. You'll definitely know there's something going on. Um, that'll also come up and tell the central monitoring location that it is the pre-action system. And uh, it'll also tell us when there's water flow from the pre-action system. There's a, there's a water flow monitor in here. And it'll also tell us, this is pumped up with air regularly, and that's how it's supervised. It's monitored with, you know, it's full of air pressure. Um, if the air pressure ever goes down, we'll get a switch that activates and tells us that there's low pressure. So it's monitored for trouble, it's monitored for supervisory. If that valve is closed, this will also shut the system off. So if that valve is ever closed, then you'll know because you'll get an alarm back at the panel. So if the pre-action system is activated and filled with water, does yep. it then have to be drained? It will. And where does that occur? So the drain, most of the drain, occurs uh, back here on the valve at the cabinet. And once you drain it from here, it drains out by the loading dock, actually. Okay. Um, the ceiling height isn't the highest on these couple floors, so we couldn't pitch it all back to here. So there's a, a few locations where I can point out one of them when we're inside. Um, it's called a drum drip. You'll see that. Uh, so somebody would come over there and either hook up a hose and leave that outside the space or bring like a 55 gallon barrel in and drain the drum drip for that part of the system into the barrel. Aside from draining, what other, what else is required in order to get it sort of ready again to, to work? Uh, this draining and then the valve needs to be reset. Okay. So somebody would have to come in, um, open it up, reset the valve, reseat it, refill the top of it with water, pump the air back up. Uh, the air is always regularly being pumped, but you know on discharge somebody would have to come in and shut down and reset it. So the normally dry system. Normally dry. Yeah. So you have air pressure holding that. Yep. Where's the pump for that, and what happens when it goes down? Because you're going to sure. pressure. Yep, the air, the air compressor is right here in the cabinet. Um, this is also monitored, so if this thing stops working and there is a leak, it'll eventually give a signal back to the, back to the control panel. Yeah, and so then you don't have that, it'll flood the system. Exactly. Just more curiosity, what's the, why is the, what's the clear um, flexible pipe? What, what's the purpose of that? This is to for a visual verification okay. when the system's working. See. You can see uh, water drain out see. through there. Okay. And then actually there's something else that I should tell you about this. This is, um, this is, a, this is a more special reaction cabinet. This is a Surefire system. So the Surefire system works where if the building ever loses power and then the battery backup duration is expended, so another 24 hours, so lose power and then don't get power back within 24 hours, the system reverts to a dry system. So you don't need any smoke detectors. It can still, if there's ever a fire, for life safety purposes, it can still discharge. For this total pack, uh, you can check the system air pressure here, which should always be about 40 PSI, and then water supply pressure down here. Uh, that's zero because the system's not live yet. But if there ever was an emergency and the gas system goes off or doesn't go off, and then there's a, there's a situation and you need to get this thing discharged, you can always emergency release. This is not the emergency release. <laughs> this is the emergency release. 
So you open this up, reach in here, pull this lever down towards you, and it will trip the system. What does trip the system? Uh, it will open up that valve and allow it to fill with water. And again, but it still requires a head to discharge. Still requires a head to break. Yep. Exactly. Hey, but are we keeping this cabinet locked, or do we have like a sense of? Yeah, I mean, okay. it'll be locked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a there's a key That's hole there, so yeah. yeah, we can we can keep this locked. Same thing with all the suppression panels. We can keep all those locked too. Um, you may not know the answer to this question, but it, is this on the um, emergency power? Emergency power. I don't believe so. Okay. And I think that's why it's on the Surefire system. I see. Um, but I can double check that and get back to you. Okay. Okay, so this is the drum drip that I was referring to out there. This is one of the spots where you drain the system. Um, this is only, you know, nobody should be touching this. This is only for the service for the service group to be operating. But um, these are the two valves. It's, it's double locked like this so that you can drain any condensation out of here, which you will never, will never really get. But drain condensation out of here into here, and then you can drop that into a bucket. Um, but there's a plug installed on the end of this so that even if you have a bad actor or something walking around and just flipping levers and whatnot, um, you won't discharge. It won't, so it won't set the system off. You won't have any water come out. Um, somebody would have to come and remove this plug and drain the system that way. Yeah, the sprinklers, they all have cages on them, head guards, uh, so that nobody can accidentally bump into it and break one of the sprinkler elements. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here we are in the uh, level four tank room. This is for all the clean agent system. Uh, clean agent system suppression, so we have the big Titan tanks here, and then these are propelled by nitrogen, and then we have two Force 500 tanks, those are, they're propelled by nitrogen that's self-contained within the tanks. Um, those, those bottles are at 500 PSI. These bottles are at 240 PSI, and these are somewhere around 3,000 or 4,000 PSI. Um, so they're, they're totally fine. You can, they're not, you don't have to worry about being around them. Um, just don't play with the control heads. <coughs> don't play with anything, but don't play with the control heads. So the stuff that's in these tanks, it's called Novec 1230. It's a firefighting fluid. Um, the amount that gets discharged into the space is significantly less than the lowest observable effect limit. So even if the system discharges, you can be in there. You don't have to. You do not have to leave. It's totally fine. Um, you should leave. The system, the, the fire alarm will go off. It means leave the building immediately. But you can be in there, and it, it's, it won't hurt you. Um, so this is a sticky note. And you can see the, the marker stays on there. So typically, if you dip this stuff in, in water, then what would happen is it would start bleeding all over the place. The thing is going to be soaking wet. So you can see it's a little bit wet at first when you pull it out. But in a relatively short amount of time, 30 seconds or so, it's just cool to the touch. It's completely dry. So I mean, I know it's, uh, I don't know how comfortable everybody is passing up. Yeah, passing dry, something around, around, trust but, me, it's dry. But uh, yeah, it's just, it's completely dry. There should be no effect on anything that it, that it discharges and touches. For instance. And this is in the liquid form. When this gets expelled out, we'll show you the nozzles when we go out there. Um, but because this is a liquid propelled by a gas, it gets oh, no, discharged. Yeah, yeah. You, got, no, you got the hot potato <laughs> It gets, I'll take it back. You don't want no, hold on. It gets it. discharged and atomized, so it's more of a fog or a mist that you'll actually see. So by the time it actually touches anything, just nothing, nothing will get wet, nothing gets, uh, nothing gets damaged. So if you're inside, this does go off, yeah. visibility-wise? Visibility-wise, you'll, you'll get a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of haziness, a little bit of fog. Um, it goes away in, within 30 seconds. Okay. Yeah. And what, like, when it is discharged, is it, is it continuously discharged until the fire goes out, or is it like a one-time? So that's a great question. Um, it discharges in by code less than 10 seconds. So if you're in there, there'll be a burst of, you know, a quick scream of, of air, well, of Novec fluid coming out with nitrogen. Um, there's, the nozzles are distributed in the space so that it gets, just gets spread out as evenly as possible. And then it's important um, to make sure that no doors are propped open. All doors should be on automatic door closers. All the HVAC vents and dampers should be should be on automatic. They are. They are on automatic 
closing systems. So as soon as the first alarm goes off, all those dampers close. All the door closers trigger and that should close as well. So you can still leave. You can still, if, you know, if the system goes off, exit the space. Um, but the hold time is 10 minutes, <clears throat> at least 10 minutes. So it'll discharge in 10 seconds, and then that will suppress a fire as long as nobody drains, the, drains anything out of the space for a minimum of 10 minutes. So it's a dealer system? Dealer system, yeah. So when it discharges, how much of a tank will it do? All of it. Yeah, all of it. All of it. This is completely empty, this is completely empty. Yeah. Um, the fourth floor, the, the big area here, it's actually <coughs> these, these tanks here. And then there's the cold storage room, the smaller room over there. That's that little guy. Uh, and that will empty in 10 seconds? 10 seconds. So does it become what? So after this is discharged, does it become water after the, at that point? That is out of the out of the system. So once it's once it's discharged into the air, it's like a like a vapor. Sure. Um, this initial. The initial, yeah. Right. And then it doesn't really you won't notice it. It just basically becomes it atmosphere. Evaporates. Okay. Yeah. So, so there's no cleanup. There's no cleanup. No cleanup. Sorry. There's smell. No smell. What's the process like for filling these back up? So for filling these back up, these tanks have to get filled, because they're high pressure tanks, 300 bar, I can't remember the PSI, but they're 300 bar tanks. Um, so those get taken out, brought to a place and recharged. And then for these, we would come in with um, Novec fluid tanks and pump it, into the, pump it into the tank. How often are those tanks tested? Tested, I have to get back to you on that. I want to say, I know they have to be measured, no, I'm talking about the, the nitrogen. Yeah, at some point, you have to inject the hydrogen. Yeah, you do. I can't remember the exact. Manuals? It is. It's it's on it's on the O and M manual. Um, I can't. I won't see the five or ten years. I can't remember. That's a good question. I get back. Do, get they, back to do they bring a, another tank in? When they do, words, like if, 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 uh, do they test them in place, or do they have to be brought to a facility? And if they bring them to a facility, are they bringing replacement tanks to make sure that the system is still up and running while they test the tanks? That is a good question. That would be up to the library. What's the uh, black tank over there? On the that's actually, um, these tanks were uh, a little low when we brought them in. So that's some nitrogen that we used to pump the pressure back up. Okay. Um, when these are shipped and agitated, the Novec can mix with some of the nitrogen and that reduces the, the pressure of, this, of the tank. Um, so, you know, standing operating procedures just pump a little more nitrogen in there, get it up to 240 PSI. They each have pressure gauges on them so you can monitor them. Um, they're also hooked up to alarms. So if those go and are depressurized for whatever reason, um, they'll send a signal back to the main control panel. Not a fire alarm signal, but it'll send a supervisory signal. And then what would be required to discharge this? Um... So to discharge these systems, we have two things that have to happen. Um, there's the VESDA, system, which is right behind you actually, that smoke detector has to go off and then a regular smoke detector has to go off. So just trying to think which order I want to explain it. Um, the way that this works is the VESDA is a very early smoke detection apparatus. Um, it's a vacuum. It's a vacuum and it, and it pulls air in from the space as a smoke detector. So the nice thing about this is that it will pick up a fire, smoke from a fire, way faster than a regular smoke detector. So it's not saying that this will go off first, but it's more than likely that the VESDA will go off before any other smoke detector goes off. So when the VESDA does detect smoke, sends a signal back, it'll send a general alarm, and it'll also let everybody in the central monitor location know that this system or the fifth floor systems are sensing something. People can come up and check it out. Um, if the fire continues to grow and there's more and more smoke and it sets off a smoke detector, the smoke detector plus the VESDA will put this system into pre-discharge. So horns and strobes will be going off. You'll have 30 seconds to leave. After those 30 seconds, the system discharges. There's abort buttons. We can look at those when we're out there. Um, if you press the abort button, it stops the system from going off, but it's on a dead man switch. So if you let go of the if you press it and let go, it will discharge. So you have to press it and hold the abort button. And as long as you hold it, the system won't go off. What would be a scenario yeah. that she would do that? 
In which you would continue to hold it? Oh, uh, yeah. Why would you abort the system? Like, what, what, what's it? Um, maybe somebody's doing testing in the space and they set the VESDA off and, and a smoke detector by accident at the same time. And then you'll have to, for the pre discharge thing going off, you shut it off. So, more likely a technician than sort of one of us being in the space. It's possible. Or, you know, like, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I don't know what typically happens, but I'm you know just just thinking about my books at home. They get dusty. You pick up a book and you blow the dust off of it, and the dust goes and sets off a couple smoke detectors. So if you were in there vacuuming or something and you didn't have the filter on, it blew a bunch of dust around there. Yep. and Set off two smokes. Yep. So how how long do you have before the system will go off? Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. So yep. you can hit that switch. Yep. And then hold it. And hold it until and it'll send an alarm to somebody. Oh yeah! As soon as that, as soon as those detectors go off, the alarm will go off. Um, unfortunately, you know, unless you have your cell phone in your pocket, you're kind of stuck there, holding that abort button until somebody shows up. But the good news is, is that the alarm's going off. It's a public building. The fire department will be coming. Somebody will be showing up shortly. No bathroom break for you. No bathroom break. I, I thought that. One of the requirements was that a sprinkler head would go off at a certain temperature. So it's like two like two different things had to set off that, right? But two yep. two smoke detectors, so a regular smoke detector and yep. a Vesda smoke detector for this system. For this system, yeah. Okay. But will dust do both of them? Will not. Okay. No. If you do the Vesda and a smoke, only this goes off. Not but the sprinklers. Not the sprinklers. Not the sprinklers. Right. But you have your first smoke then for the sprinkler because you have a smoke detector that went off. So then if your fire, if for whatever reason this doesn't put the fire out, your fire continues to grow, and you have another smoke detector go off in the space, then your pre-action system valve opens up and you get water in your pipe. Uh, can I clarify that? Yes. Yeah, so is there a scenario where, where dust alone will set off the clean agent being discharged? If there's enough dust, whatever would set off a smoke detector could set this off. How much dust could do it? Let's try it. Um, it would have to be 3.2% obscuration per foot, I believe. Which means that your visibility for 100 feet would have to be 3 feet less. No, but no, just but in, in practice, we have right. we have smoke detectors that do go off. From yeah. So you're, you're, I mean, it would have to be two. Which is it would have to be, and the, and the whole point of this too is that it's, it's two different smoke detector systems. So like, um, you have your smoke detector network. Those are all your smoke detectors. Those are off of one system. So, you know, you can short that out by accident if you're doing something in the panels. It won't set the system off. You can short out the VESDA by accident. It won't set the system off. You have to have your VESDA system detect, and you have to have your smoke detector system detect. So two separate. So we'll look at the two smoke detectors yep. at some point. So. Yeah, actually there's two in this room right oh, here. Are, okay. Yeah, so you can see there's one smoke detector here and one smoke detector there. Oh, one's VESDA and one's regular? Those are smoke detectors. Oh, okay. So the VESDA system, like I, like I was saying, it was a vacuum. So this piping here, this will have little holes drilled in it, and that pulls it air in through it. So this VESDA is for this guy and this pulls air from the cold storage room. So we can go in there and check it out if you want. If you get close, you can hear it whistling a little bit because it's drawing air in. Um, but that would bring any kind of smoke that might be occurring back into here and the detectors right here. But back in the space, yep. sorry, Kelly, there are, are there like little heads or actual detectors or is it just a pipe? It's, it's the orange pipe. Okay. Could dust ever set off the VESDA system? Yes. It works. Um, the VESDA is a more sensitive smoke detector. Yep. But the pipe itself is the actual smoke detector as opposed to a smoke detector like this, right? Yes. Kind of. Yes. So I'd say this black box is your detector, Okay. but your the arm of your detector that's doing the, that's doing the, the, the nose, this is the nose. That's uh, better. Better way to explain it. So one gigantic thing is mm -hmm. the nose yeah. throughout the system, and we should not bonk it under any circumstances. Well, you can you can touch it, you can rattle it. I mean, it's, but we shouldn't like you know we're putting furniture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, don't break it. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Try not to. Yeah. Um, is this the only sort of Vesda panel, or that this is it right here? This is it for this tank. Um, I believe there's one more 
in the space for this system. And then a level five, there's five more because it's a pretty big area that has to get sampled. Um, so those are also called out on the record drawing plans. Uh, we can go look at them all if you guys like. Um, but yeah, there, there's, there's several. You are in a space where like, material is constantly coming off of the collection with the art. Mm. Do the, 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 the sniffer holes get clogged up over time? They can. They can get clogged over time. Um, and then how you would fix that, um, there's standard maintenance that, that gets looked at. Um, if they do start to get clogged, the detector, um, when we program this, we, we program the flow rate. So if the flow rate decreases, it will send a trouble signal back to the main panel and somebody will know that that detector is, something's going on. Somebody will come up and look, they'll see the light that's lit up, they'll know, and then they can service it that way. Good question. All right. I guess, um, and you're, you're responsible for the Vesta system as well, right? That one is a little bit of a gray space. Um, the, the fire alarm subcontractor installed the Vesta, or they own the VESDA systems. We installed the VESDA systems. Okay. The VESDA system, they programmed the VESDA system. The VESDA system activates our <laughs> system. Mm. Right. So it is not going to be so, no. I don't think that's what we were. No, that's you. No, that's you. So what I was going to say is canister art, like uh, we, we can service VESDA systems. So if you guys want help with any of that stuff, I mean, feel free to choose a call. Okay. All right. So this is the VESDA detector. Um, this is your sampling port, so you'll have air being drawn in through this pipe. This is your exhaust port. This will bring the air that's sampled back to the same space. That's important for best detectors, because you don't want to be pulling in, you know, maybe it's not a library, maybe it's a chemical processing plant. You don't want to pull in hazardous vapors and then discharge them into a room that somebody's monitoring. So anyways, this is your suction, this is your exhaust. You have some lights on here that can tell you whether there's trouble, whether it's disabled, whether there's a fire, um, whether there's alert, action, fire, fire one, fire two. So this is not a normal smoke detector in, in where it can tell you how much smoke you're getting. So what this will do is this will send um, a variation of different signals back to the main panel. So if you start to get a bit of smoke, I believe that gets signaled to the main fire alarm panel so somebody can check it out. So if you're doing, you know, if somebody's doing stuff in one of the rooms where they're discharging a lot of dust or disturbing a lot, and it starts to create some kind of a signal, people can alert, alert that person and tell them to stop or slow down or whatever it might be. Um, as long as the smoke keeps getting more and more intense, the alarm level will rise and rise and rise until it detects and goes into general alarm. Uh, this will send a signal to our fire suppression panel, which we'll look at afterwards. Um, and our fire suppression panel sends a signal to the base building fire alarm panel, and that will send the building into general alarm. So if, again, this is only for, you know, only, only people licensed or certified to, to operate this should, should ever touch anything of it, but this button here is your disable switch. So if you hold this for 10 seconds, it disables the smoke detector. So that's important for anybody doing work in the space or servicing this or anything like that. Uh, and if it is disabled, it sends this into supervisory and that's, that's signaled at the main control panel. So anytime anybody touches anything, somebody knows about it. And then how's it turned back on? Same thing. Same thing yeah, seconds. hold that button. I can't remember, maybe it's three seconds, but it's, you know, you hold it for a little bit again. And, uh, and when you hold it, you'll know because I think this um, exclamation mark will start flashing. That lets you know that it goes into <coughs> disable with the square. Yep. You have a question, Brad? No, you still have this. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And, and again, if you hold the disable, it, it shouldn't, it won't, I won't say it won't, but it should not send the building into alarm. It shouldn't send the building into alarm. So there should be, you know, nothing bad about pressing that button. Um, and if it is pressed, people will know about it and they can get turned back on. But only people who are supposed to be pressed. Only people who are supposed to, like, then that goes for, of course, anything. Like, right, like, only people who are supposed to touch this should touch this. Only people who are supposed to touch the tanks should touch the tanks. Basically, um, only people certified for servicing should be doing any of that stuff. So th these are the tanks, um, the Titan tanks. These have 
uh, liquid tape measures. So it's it's tagged on on the side of the tank here. Um, the weight, the the fill weight, um, the pressure, the serial numbers, all of that, and then in the logs, the liquid level is also indicated. It's hooked up to a little magnet, so you just keep pulling this up until it grabs, and then that's when you know you're at you're at your fill level. So this will be part of the part of the regular maintenance. Um, it gets checked, and if it's low, somebody can come and fill the tank up. Um, but you can see when you get to that fill point, that's where that's where the magnet grabs or the float. Sorry. Is there any sort of like evaporation that occurs over time? Or? There shouldn't be any evaporation. There shouldn't be any leakage. Um, you know, things can happen where where valves or seals aren't aren't done properly. But um, again, all that pressure is monitored. So if it ever is low, you'll know about it. Uh, that's just part of the. I think I believe it's yearly maintenance. Yearly maintenance. It's just a, a triple, quadruple check to make sure that all your fluid's still in there. Over here, these are the controls for the uh, for the clean agent system. Over here, we have our key disable switches. Again, this is all stuff that the maintenance crew and uh, certified people should be should be operating. But um, basically, when you flip this switch, it's supervised. It'll send a signal back to the main control panel. But as soon as you flip that switch, it turns off the solenoid on the tanks, so they can't discharge. It's actually a, a mechanical separation, so the wires are separated. It can't can't be discharged. Um, so that's important. If anybody's ever servicing the system, they got to hit that switch. These are the relays and monitor modules for all the fire alarms, smoke detectors. Um, what is it? Smoke detector, the notification appliances, the horn strobes, the pull stations, the abort switches. Those are all run back to here. All these wires come to here to this panel. So if there's ever an event or anything happens with anything with the clean agent system or the pre-action system, it will come up with a message on this screen. We programmed it in to try to be as descriptive as possible. So it'll tell you, you know, what zone, what tank, uh, what supervisory, or what alarm, or what's going off. This should always be locked. Um, yeah, that should always be locked. But if you, if you look inside, there's a, there's a key panel, and there's acknowledgement, signal silence, system reset. So you can go and you can scroll through. You can go and scroll through the different uh, signals that are on here, and if it's beeping continuously, you can hit signal silence. And, but again, this is only for uh, certified people who are servicing the system. Um, what else to know about that? If you're not certified and you touch it and you shut it off, it's a felony. Yep. It is. Shot the 148. Pass general law. So yeah, if you come in here and say, well, I'll just shut it off, you could be charged with a felony. Okay, so something we're looking at over here for the Force 500, this is your solenoid that activates the, the system. So what will happen is you have your VESDA system go off, your smoke detectors, your smoke detector go off, you have your 30 second pre-discharge time delay, you get your signal to the panel, the panel will send the electric signal all the way through, down into the head, and it'll fire a solenoid, which actuates this pin. This pin will go and scratch the surface of the disc and as soon as it starts to scratch that metal disc which is holding all the uh, all the Novec fluid back it bursts open almost like peeling the top off of a tuna can it just bursts wide open and lets the whole system discharge in 10 seconds or less all right so here we have our Titan system the way that this works this is filled with Novec this one's filled with nitrogen we have a signal our smoke, sorry, the VESDA system goes off, we have a smoke detector go off, we have our 30 second pre-discharge delay, panel sends a signal down through to the control head, that gets discharged, this is released at 4,350 PSI, comes through this black hose here, ruptures this disc, this tank's at 240 PSI, as soon as that pressure from the nitrogen tank brings this tank to 500 PSI, the same thing happens here. There's a disc that ruptures and opens up, and it fills this system and discharges in 10 seconds or less. Okay, so here we have the, the clean agent nozzles that I was speaking about. This is one of the clean agent nozzles. So these are always open. Um, they're open all the way back to the tanks. 
So it's a dry pipe network, you could say. Um, and the way this works is wherever these nozzle holes are, that's, it'll do a 180 degree discharge in that direction. So the way they're set up is all the book aisles will be installed. These nozzles should be every few aisles spraying down the aisle. There's a few 360 degree nozzles, uh, but for the most part, you'll see 180 degree nozzles. Uh, I believe they throw 32 feet in one direction, um, so they have, a, they have a pretty good spray. Uh, you don't want to really put anything within two to three feet of the nozzle because that's where you can get the liquid. So when we laid this out, we were very particular with the aisles and how the arrangement of all that was going to be. So we made sure that we were minimum distance away from everything. So as long as, as long as no bookshelf, if bookshelves ever move, contact us and let us know, and we can we can figure out how to how to adjust this properly. <laughs> so um, that's the nozzle. Uh, each system has an has an array of nozzles. It's all hooked up to this white piping. It's all white piping, but this white piping. Um, it's bracketed and braced so that that will resist any amount of force and load that, that you could put on, you could possibly put on it. It's, um, yeah, it's a, it's a very secure, very sturdy system. Everything's back braced. It's forever. It's a forever system. So that's the clean agent. Um, over here we have the orange piping. This is the Vesta piping, part of the detector network we were talking about before. This is the nose of the system. And if you walk down... Oh, the... Yep, that's actually the Vesta detector for this room is over there next to that ladder. This is the fourth floor stack room. Um, and for the most part, we will have trunk lines running this way and then the branches running out this way. So if you walk down any of these orange pipes, every so many feet you'll see a little, I want to say these are one eighth, one eighth holes on all of these. Yep, so he's got right there next to that sprinkler. Um, it's almost impossible to see from a distance, but if you get really close, you can hear it whistling a little bit, like um, not with me speaking. But that's the first detector that should ever go off. And that's the first detector that can set off the clean agent system, along with a regular smoke detector, which are installed in here. Yeah, right above there, right there. Are they connected, this one and the other one? Uh, these ones are not connected. So this has it here. All of this piping here on this side is for that is for that cold storage room through that door right there. Is that what you mean? Uh, for the fourth floor, I want to say that there's two. This one and then the one in the tank room. And then on the fifth floor, I think there's five. Because I think there's um, two for the north room and two for the south room for the big stack rooms. Yeah, I want to say there's Two, four, there must be three. There's three for one of the rooms. I think there's five. Uh, we can look at the plans and verify that. So over here, we have the clean agent release and the abort button and the automatic door opener. Um, so the way this works is if the detection system goes off and you do not want the system to discharge, it was a mistake, there was an accident for whatever reason, you come over here and you press your thumb on that, and press that button, and you hold it, and you don't let go. That's it. Abort button. Um, as soon as you let go, I think it's on a 10 second timer. It'll start from 10 down to 0 and discharge the first time. And after that, as soon as you let go, it discharges. So you can take your hand off of it once, but really keep your hand, keep your hand on that button. This is the pull station for the agent release. You pull this switch it bypasses the abort button. That will not work anymore. You can't do this and this. It's, if, as soon as you pull this, the system is discharging. How quick? In 10 seconds? I want to say that that is on a 30 second timer also. Are there any um, audible alert 
sorry, and I see the um, stroke for yep. the clean aging system. But what happened? What actually happened? So when you have your first detector go off, VESDA, um, VESDA system goes off, this will start to pulse, it'll strobe, but you'll hear the audible tone slow, like, one, like once a second. Um, you'll know that that's your first alarm going off. As soon as your smoke detector sets off, you have your second alarm go off, that goes into pre-discharge, that's a 30 second timer. This will strobe fast. It'll be like two or three beeps every second. You'll, you'll definitely know the difference. Um, and then when it actually discharges, that goes from a temporal pattern to a solid tone. Just a solid continuous. Um, so those are your three different stages that you'll have these go off in. And then there's a pull abort and one of these at every exit doorway to any to any of the spaces. Um, and then there's also one of these on the entrance door to every one of the spaces. So if the system does discharge and you see one of these clean agent amber strobe beacons going off over, not amber, but the, uh, the horn strobes going off, don't enter the space. There's also signs, we can get a photo of it afterwards, but there's signs on every doorway that's protected by the Novex system. Um, that's just to let everybody know that if, if there is an alarm and the system does discharge and you hear a solid tone, don't open the doorway, let the fire department show up and, and, and do their thing. Because you don't want to let any of that agent come out of the room. What actually happens if only the bed of the thing is tripped? Is it just the alarm? Like, how does it, how do you turn it off? Or, like, what does it, I guess it's not a fire, but it's active? Sure. Um, so, um, yeah, the VESDA system is activated, you know, the VESDA system is activated. That will set this off. Um, it also sets the building off into general alarm. Um, so what would happen is somebody would come, somebody would check to make sure that there was no fire in the area, uh, make sure there's nothing going on, and then they would have to reset the VESDA at our suppression panel, that black panel that was back in the tank room. And they would also have to reset it at the main building fire alarm panel. So just to clarify that, I don't mean to be excessive. No, no. Dust, yeah. But the dust alone will set off the entire EPL fire alarm, yep. not the suppression. Yes. Okay. And it does have to Yeah, right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that, that's really the point of putting in the two, the two separate systems. One for high sensitivity, um, it should let anybody know that the, the air is too dusty before it, before it even goes off. Um, so when, when operations start back up in here, I recommend monitoring that, um, having somebody, you know, having somebody keep an eye on it at the, at the, main, at the main panel to make sure that, uh, you know, where you're not approaching those limits. Um, and if, if you find that you are approaching those limits and it is, it, it turns out you really need a less sensitive system, that can be adjusted. We can come back and reprogram that. We can set it to different sensitivity levels. Um, oftentimes, uh, you know, those VESDA systems, can, they're frequently used in places like coal mines. It's very, very, very dusty environments. And um, you can install them and just have it set to auto-learn. And then it'll sample over the course of a week and then come up with a recommended sensitivity. So there's a lot of different options you can, you can play with with those things. Um, but, but really, if, uh, if you're concerned about it or if you're having any issues, call us. You know, we're happy to talk about it. biggest, in terms of from, from an egress modeling and, and assessment perspective, deciding to leave is usually what takes the longest, despite the size of the building. 
surprisingly. So oftentimes, an alarm will go off, they'll wait for somebody else to go first, they'll go and get their, people get their things, you know, this or that. It takes up to, people take up to five minutes to decide to leave. If I can stress anything, if a fire alarm goes off, leave immediately. You know, because it's, it's, it's impossible to know what the situation is. Um, so, but you know, having said that, the, the VESDA system should send an alert first before the alarm goes off. Somebody can respond to that. Staff can totally respond to that. Um, as soon as the actual building alarm goes off, exit immediately. And that would be an alert to the building No, it would be an alert to the fire pit. Right? It would be an alert to the fire pit. Yeah. Yep. So then how do you know that's going on the fire? Well, I mean, it's all so usually you can hear it. But, but I think it's a good sort of line of question. Um, so for level one in the VESDA yes. system, is it, does it send a supervisory to the main fire panel? Yeah. So it'll be an audible sort of beep or chime, yeah. and then we would go down and we would see VESDA sort of level one. But in addition to that, the VESDA would also be, would that also send out an audible? Uh, I believe you see a, does it beep? I don't think it beeps. I think you just get a light on the VESDA. And it doesn't uh, activate the, the, the strobe or the audible button. Right, not for alert or action. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah. So it would, it would only be at the fire pit. Um, it, it's in the Johnson um, fire control room, but then also in the um, lobby, and then there's um, another enunciator in the um, in the basement of the facilities area as well. I'm sorry. What kind of thing triggers something to happen? A lot of things. So for example. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it can't, so um, it's really up to the facilities group to keep a close eye on. But just like recognizing if the alarm is in this space, whatever it is, it's prioritized? Is that how, you're, how you would approach it? Or, or the supervisory, I guess? Like, how do you the history up? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really daily, right? And um, I think the one, to me, the sort of... Um, things that we, areas where we need to strengthen is um, like overnight, what happens if, if you know, those supervisory alerts um, come up, that, that's where I think our vulnerability is more so than sort of during the day. And a light comes on that panel? I believe that's it. So would, if our staff see that light, would that be triggered in contact with facilities? Definitely, see the light yeah, definitely. And then we would say, we know we're working on it, or, oh my god, I'm going to go look at it. Yeah, I mean, having the beds and the clean agent, this is definitely the Cadillac or Maserati nowadays, I guess. I don't know what. It's the, it's the nice, you got, you got, this is, this is the best, the best system that can protect storage for sure yeah in terms of not only early warning but also uh, if there ever is a discharge it, it won't damage anything won't damage. No, no, no damage no cleaning up yeah. so our biggest risk is probably the sprinkler system as opposed to the yep biggest system. yeah no, no you're right the biggest the biggest risk is the, is the sprinkler system but again um, it is a pre-action system, so it's dry. It's supervised, it's monitored. All the heads have head cages on them. Um, yeah, it, pretty strong, though. But it, so, um, uh, and you may have said this, and I'm sorry if I forgot, but the sprinkler system is really independent of the VESDA and the, um, 
what's the other said the um, general right building. so right I mean I know what they'll communicate but yeah. they don't work together at all yeah yeah think of think of the Vesda is specifically for the clean agent the smoke detector system does both depending on how many smoke detectors go off so it's it's a, it's a matrix really I mean you have your Vesda plus one smoke is your clean agent system you have two smokes it's your free action system. So water for two smokes, not, not the Vesta. Water for two smokes, clean agent for a smoke and a Vesta. And if you have a Vesta and two smokes, you have both. But if you have Vesta and two smokes, you probably should have both. But again, for the sprinkler system, um, the two smokes, it would just be, it would be local to where those two smokes are in terms of the, where it would discharge, is that correct? It, it would be, well, yes, it would, it would be out of whichever head it ultimately breaks, but the pre-action system is not zoned on these floors. The pre-action system is the whole Rare Books project. So on the fourth floor, um, you have two smokes go off. The, two, the, the pre-action system fills here. It also fills in the offices. It also fills in, uh, where are those two big rooms over there? Yeah, conservation. Conservation, thank you. Yeah, it fills the conservation areas. Um, yeah. But I'm sorry, so but for clarification, so what it does, it'll fill with water. Yeah. Um, but it won't actually discharge until the heat is such that the, um, sprinkler, breaks. the sprinkler head breaks. Yeah. Okay. So it places the leaf to yeah. the wind. It's not the it doesn't operate all. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> yeah. And then another, another important thing to know, too, is... Um, the way that it should be, the way that it, you know, we discussed about it being programmed, um, two smokes have to be in the same row. So if a smoke detector goes off in here and a smoke detector goes off in the office space, no, then nothing happens. You'll get general alarm, but you won't have any, any activation. Hmm. We're very particular about that. So same thing with the office space. You have to have two heads in the same room in the office go off. You can't have a head in one room and a head in another room because that's not representative of when you have a discharge. I don't know if you can answer this. If there is, if there's something that happens in the rest of the building, not in here, that triggers the smoke alarm, yep. what do staff hear and hear to exit the building? Say, say what to staff what? Like how does staff know to exit the building because there's a problem in another part of the building okay. outside the store? Sure. Um, this is speculation on my part, I don't know for a fact, but um, the way that fire alarm is typically run in buildings is you'll have, if, uh, if an event goes off somewhere, that will activate the floor, the floor above, and the floor below for fire alarm. And unless you have a horizontal separation, and I think that's like a four hour firewall. So if you have a four hour firewall and the alarm goes off in a different part of the building, you don't have to leave because you have four hours before a fire gets there anyways. Yeah, the way our building works is it'll be the entire building. Okay. Right, so if there, is that what you're asking? Yeah, so like, if there's something in the second that is independent of your books, but it's staying to back of the building, like, it's not going to trigger the clean agent stroke, so like, what is the other announcement in this space to tell staff okay. the building is being there, there, there are, are strokes, strokes yeah. Yeah. like fire alarm speaker strokes. Yeah, they are. So, so it's the same. So they're system. in here, it's just not, not these. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Right. They are in here. Uh, they're, they're part of the, the other network, the building alarm network. We treat every single thing exactly the same. Just if you hear any sort of alarm, you just leave. There's no other very obvious. Right. But yeah, no, I mean, this is all part of the regular building alarm. Um, we have separation between the two buildings, so if something an alarm goes off in the cam, it won't trigger this. It's just everywhere I look, I don't see it. Uh, <laughs> I know. That. But there's no yeah, there's like regular corn stools. Oh, they're on the ceiling. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you'll see them flashing your oh. ear going off. But there's no reason, like now that we have this fire alarm, we're going to. Look, there's no reason we would ever know that there was a fire here or floor seven. So it's all going to be the same. It's all the same. You just evacuate. Yeah. There's no indication that there's something happening in the not, not from the, only if it was the Vesta or the, you know. Yeah, right. But no, uh, for a regular building fire alarm, it doesn't say it's here. Um, 
You can tell it's the main fire alarm control panel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But for the occupants of the individual spaces, no, you don't know. And then even for the abort button, it would literally only be, the only situation I can think of is if, like, you're the one that picked up the dust and you obviously know that you yeah. did it and you see it. But otherwise, you really should just evacuate. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that's an excellent point. System, manual release, fire suppression system, abort button, push and hold. So there's a little description, lets people know what's going on. Here we have all three lined up. This is for the clean agent system. This will discharge the clean agent and set off the building fire alarm. This is the abort, you have to push and hold to stop the discharge. This one would just be building fire alarm. No clean agent. All right, so here we have two of the VESDAs for the fifth floor. Um, the functionality of these two VESDAs is the same, consider them the same unit. Um, the difference is, uh, we got a question, this one has a screen, this one does not have a screen. That's because this one's a VESDA four pipe system, this one's a VESDA one pipe system. So the four pipe systems, you can have four different pipe networks come out of the top of here, and all of those come with the screen. For the VESDA one pipe system, well, you can only use one port, only the first port, no screen. But essentially, you get the same signals, you get the same alarm capability, you get the same everything. Um, this one you can, you can just cycle through. So if you all want to come over here and take a look at it, it gives you your percent obscuration per foot on the screen here. So if you're starting to get a little bit of smoke, you'll know. You'll see here you have your, your fire triangle, and it'll, it'll start to fill up, and you'll know you get more and more and more smoke until your alarm actually goes off. You can cycle through these things. So this is your airflow. So like I was telling you before, or we had a question um, about it getting blocked up potentially from dust over time. This is telling us our percent flow rates. So as soon as your percent flow rate starts to go down, you'll, you'll, get, an, you'll get a supervisory signal back at the fire alarm control panel. And I think it's set to 70% or I think it's 80% for low flow and 120% for high flow. So, there is a high flow supervisory, so if one of the pipes is broken or bumped or something comes loose and you're pulling more air than you should be, um, there'll be a notification for that also. How do we get that information from the one pipe system? We don't, or? This information you can get by hooking it up to a computer, which you have to have a tech come out for. How about the panel downstairs? That wouldn't have this information? That will not have the information only if you end up getting a supervisory. Okay. So the one downstairs is the one? One point. Right. Yep. And this is the only four? Uh, I have to check on that. I don't remember. I think that the one that we've seen was, like, was the only one. That looks like that's the only one. Yeah. And what's in the gray box? Is that? Oh, those batteries? Yep. These, this is the power supply. Okay. Um, so this goes from 120 volt to 24 volt. You have one for each VESDA unit. Um, there's two batteries in here, and I, this is not a factory mutually insured building, right? I don't believe uh, it is. It is, actually. It is. Yeah. Okay, so then you have 90 hours of battery life. So when I said before 24 hours of failure, it's 90 hours for factory mutual buildings. So you have to have quite a, quite a problem in Boston for, for that to happen. Here we go. We just finished the last. Come on, let's get there. Come on, give yourself a big.